Welcome back to another segment of Voice What presents the great business story transforming India in association with NETV Profit. In the world of healthcare, innovation is key and at the forefront of this revolution is MedGenome, a pioneering company that's harnessing the power of genomic solutions. Well, this is a company that's embarked upon a journey to make genetic testing affordable and accessible to everyone, founded by visionary leaders who saw the immense potential in genetic testing. Well, MedGenome is literally at the forefront of genomic innovation. We have with us uh, Dr. Vedam Ramprasad, the PhD and CEO of MedGenome. His expertise has literally paved the way for personalized medicine with uh, cutting edge genomic solutions. Welcome on the show. Thank you. So, of course, uh, the potential of genomics uh, has uh, you know, been known by the world, but the power that it has, the transformative power to revolutionize healthcare management was discovered long ago. And that is the power that you have leveraged in order to address the unmet need in India. Tell us your story. Well, uh, see, DNA is a code of life. Anywhere there is a life, there is DNA because it's a blueprint. Now, what happened was about 40 or 50 years back, there was no way how you can really decipher DNA, what it is, what is a blueprint. For the first time, somebody has sequenced the human genome to understand it. Now, what happened post that was a revolution. So, uh, what really is genetic testing? Yeah. And what does next generation sequencing really mean? Exactly. So, the revolution that happened post that was, the sequencing of the genome became a commodity today, which means what used to take a 10 years for one human genome to be sequenced, in the next 20 years, it became like today we do it in three days time. We, it costs about $500 for us. And when it happened, this has happened because of a technology called next generation sequencing. This is one of the technology which is a next generation sequencing which has defied most law, which means the costs have gone down so much, the capacity has increased so much. Today, for every common man who can afford this and do genetic testing for various types of disorders, and there is a significant actionability and you can save lives. Sir, you have embarked on a journey with a mission to make it affordable as far as genetic testing is concerned, to make it affordable and accessible to everyone. You're literally at the forefront of genomics innovation. Sir, what would you need for a genetic test? Is it for, is this a little bit of my blood perhaps? See, blood is definitely great, but today we don't need even blood. That's even minimal invasive. We can even with a drop of saliva, we call a spit, spit. You just spit it into a small container, we ship it anywhere, we can get DNA out of it and we can sequence it. So a, a bit of saliva is enough for us to do it. And sir, the big question for all our viewers, how much does it cost? Costs are coming down. Today, for example, a health, genetic health risk assessment, we do as low as uh, 5 to 5,000 rupees, 5,500 rupees. Uh, to it can go at even about a lakh rupees depending upon you want to look at the whole genome, everything you want to decipher out of it and costs about lakh. So what are the basic things that people generally want to know? See there are two components if you are looking, predominant of our testing is on the illness side because that's where the health burden across the country, significant health burden. We are trying to help patients and uh, work with doctors to come up with solutions on the illness side. So situations in um, maternal care, uh, reproductive health is one big area. Cancer is a big area, oncology is a big area where there was a lot of unmet need. And as the drug discovery is also moving through omics, there are many drugs that are coming up where we call targeted therapies based on your genetic mutations the treatments are given. So these two areas are one side. On other side, on the wellness side, I can decipher many things from where you are coming from, which region, which ancestry, who are your grandparents, so recreational stuff can be given. At the same time, we can give you health risks. 
Are you at a very high risk of getting early heart attack, early myocardial infarction? Do you have a big risk for Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's disease? We can like about 15 to 20 disease health risks can be uh, done. Right, uh, sir, when you talk about heart disease, what you mentioned, we see many 40-year-olds while exercising, those that have come in the media, in the news uh, lately, whether it's been actors or it's been celebrities who've died while working out. Sir, could you perhaps help those who are kind of worried now as to how much they should exercise? Could that trigger a heart attack? Because there's so many people now really worried as to how much time they should be spending in the gym and especially post-COVID, everyone seems to be slightly, uh, you know, treading with caution. So we have a flagship test called as Cardiogen. It's, it's a test that has come out of about roughly five to six years of multi-center collaborative research that we have done in India for Indian population predominantly. We work with some of the large cardiac centers in the country and we came up with a risk score. It's called as polygenic risk score. It's a predictive score and each individual has a different score. And individuals who have a very high score are at high risk of getting an early heart attack. But please understand this, this is only one component of it. So there are lifestyle components, there are, there are dietary components, there are other environment components like smoking which also causes this risk. So in any general common disease, it's the interplay of your genetic factors with your health. So if your lifestyle factors are good, you try to reduce the risk over there, then you can control your health. But your genetic factors at this point of time are not modifiable. So you have to take control of your lifestyle. Knowing the risk of your genetic, uh, inherent genetic risk, you can change your lifestyle factors. Sir, you've been around for a decade. You were the first ones to bring in genetic testing to India. Take us through what your challenges have been. You must have had to get never seen before technology, uh, you know, source and create a local talent with the right uh, skill set. Um, how difficult was it or how easy was it for you? It wasn't definitely not easy for us. Uh, like any other startup, when we did uh, bootstrapping from 2012-13 onwards so far, it was an uphill task. Uh, some of the challenges we faced uh, uh, where of course initially awareness is a, it was a big challenge for us. For the first, even now, genomics awareness is not really great, but, but compared to what we saw in 2014, 13, 15, uh, it's, it's a significant change now. But in those days, awareness was very, very low. But thanks to fantastic uh, team, my colleagues who have been there, I think we have wonderful people in the company who have really made these things uh, successful. Right, as a non-communicable disease, uh, the, the load of that, that burden is massive in the country. Uh, what does your, the role that your technology plays in order uh, when it comes to this uh, burden, how do you address this burden in the country? See, when it comes to non-communicable just imagine 100 million diabetics in the country, roughly about 11% of the population and 15% are pre-diabetics. I'm giving you one example of non-communicable disease. If you need to make an impact on this, it can't be, genomics will definitely play a critical role, but it can't be just genomics. There are many other aspects, all put together along with genomics. It's taken at a population level, some big government initiatives, in the initiatives from large healthcare providers will make a significant impacts. We can stratify individuals, we can identify high-risk individuals. Do you feel the market for genomics has expanded hugely? What do you owe the success and the awareness to? A success, of course, capital is very important. We were fortunate, uh, the kind of work we did, we had a, a capital that has been come. Second, uh, innovation, there's at least some amount of frugal innovation that we have done in the country because most of the times, we rely this in majority in the West or in US, Europe. This is something that from initial onwards, if we have to bring affordable testing to a 1.4 billion population, we have to be at least a bit of innovation. So we did quite a bit of innovation. We do everything here. We have tech teams, we have bioinformatics teams, we have software team. We do, in fact, today, we cater to roughly about 24 countries and all of them are emerging countries. And that's something that we truly believe that India can cater to these requirements to many of the populations across the world. Right, uh, sir, uh, what does uh, the future of uh, Medgeum look like? 
Oh well, um, uh, uh, as long as we execute things well, the future is fantastic. I could I could say that it's things are changing today. We are we are there is an new drugs coming where you can even modify the code, the DNA code. So knowing the code is going to be much more important. It will become significant. So as any other company, we have to do things responsibly. We have to keep uh, commercial interest at the same time, patient interest. And we keep doing these things. We execute things. It's a company forever. Right, uh, DNA uh, um, uh, alteration is what you're talking about. Uh, that is very, very interesting. Wishing you all the very best. Thank you so much Thank for you. speaking to us here on NETV Profit. Thank you.